a great pleasure to be here. And I must thank uh, His Excellency the Governor for very kindly hosting me to, uh, and welcoming me to Nazareth Day. And also for uh, conceding to uh, the arm twisting of my dear friend, uh, Mr. Zamodia. I'm glad to see that um, His Excellency has agreed to build uh, the road. I'm also very happy that uh, Mr. Zamodia did not make any demand of the federal government, <laughs> which uh, puts me in a, a rather good position. But I want to thank uh, Mr. Zamodia, a friend of mine of many, many years. Uh, the team at the Muller Farm, uh, the Miller Fuller Foundation, and all partners for inviting me to join you at this watershed event in the very important work of providing housing, especially for Nigerians who need it the most. It is a task that you have faithfully stuck to over many years. And as we join you to celebrate the commissioning of these 248 new homes, which brings the number of homes you have provided thus far to 1,000, I congratulate you and your partners. The housing challenge that we face in Nigeria is in two forms. The first is that we have the issue of inadequate housing supply to meet our population growth, particularly for low-income individuals and families. And our population is growing at 5 million people every single year, 5 million extra people. In other words, any, any community, if you, Liberia, has a population of about 5 million. But every year, we create a new Liberia here in Nigeria. <laughs> because of, so you can imagine the enormity of the challenge. Then we also have the issue of substandard housing. In other words, houses that are hardly habitable. You, know, you find many people living in cramped one bedroom, one room, sometimes even no toilet facilities. Unfortunately, as I've said, these uh, shortcomings continue to grow with increasing social and economic inequalities in our society. At the extreme, many households are faced with a dilemma of survival between food and adequate shelter. But the, the, the vision of the uh, administration of President Muhammad Dubai from the inception is that we must have a nation where the weakest amongst us have the dignity of a decent home and livelihood. It's a, difficult, it's a difficult enterprise, a difficult challenge, but that's a vision. While the challenge of inadequate or no housing undermines the quality of life of so many Nigerians, it also denies our economy and therefore our collective welfare, the growth that is possible through even a vibrant housing market. So it's not just that it is bad not to have good houses. It's not good for the economy. Most places in the world where you have a house, it also means that the economy becomes more vibrant because you can use your house as collateral to borrow money in order to do business. As a matter of fact, that's the first, the primary way by which most small businesses raise capital is by pledging their homes, using their homes as collateral all over the world. So we deprive the economy of the vibrancy that it ought to have when we don't have uh, housing, adequate housing. But the government is taking both challenges very seriously. Immediately we were sworn in in 2015, we established the Social Investment Program. Now the Social Investment Program is a 500 billion set of initiatives designed to improve the quality of life of the most vulnerable, the poorest Nigerians. And the Social Investment Program is the largest of its kind in Africa. That's the one that has the homegrown school feeding where we're feeding 9.5 million children every single day. And that's the one that also has the empire, which we've referred to. And we, a component of that is the social housing fund, 100 billion as part of that um, 500 billion, although we've never been able to give up to 100 billion, even half of that. But that is the, uh, that's what the budget says, that we'll provide 100 billion as part of the 500 billion for low-cost housing. And that is uh, supposed to be run by the Family Homes Fund in the Ministry of Finance. This is in addition to the National Housing Program of the Federal Ministry of Works. In addition, when along with the rest of the world, we were faced with the COVID-19 pandemic and the impact on the economy, 
we reacted swiftly by putting in place an economic sustainability plan. Part of that plan was a 200 billion national social housing program aimed at delivering houses for Nigerians on low income. The program is supposed to create 300,000 new homes. So far, 18 states have given us free land because we work with the states. It's the Family Homes Fund that is the manager of that process. So we work with states, the state gives free land, and, and then uh, the Family Homes Fund builds uh, the homes. And so far we've built 19,478 homes, including 582 that were purchased from the Millard, uh, from the Millard Fuller Foundation. And I'm told by the MD of the Family Homes Fund that we are in the process of negotiating another 400 homes uh, with uh, the uh, Millard Fuller Foundation. The, the aim of our social housing program, as low-cost housing, is to be able to give a self-contained one bedroom at a maximum of 2 million naira and 3.2 million naira for a two-bedroom house. Of course, as I've said, the land will be free. We negotiated with Dangote, with Boa, and Lafarge Cement, the three major cement companies in Nigeria. And they agreed to give us cement for building those low-cost houses at 30% discount. So we now have relatively low-cost cement to build our social uh, housing or our, ho our low-cost housing. To ensure that these initiatives are sustained, we're in the final stages of our comprehensive 10-year national housing strategy. The strategy is the first of its kind. It has input from the private sector, and it has the following primary objectives. The first is the harmonization of all existing housing initiatives and programs. And this is a point which uh, Mr. Samodia made, that there are so many housing initiatives all over the country. So what we're hoping to do is to catalog what we are doing so that we know all of the different housing initiatives, the public housing initiatives, both federal and state. The second B is reducing housing construction cost. Just as you've seen, the cost of construction is currently very high. With inflation now, it's even higher. So an important route to achieving this outcome is to focus on developing the capacity for manufacturing, building materials locally. And that's one of the objectives of, of our social housing uh, scheme, that we will try as much as possible to use locally manufactured products so that we can boost the local uh, market itself. And the third, which is also very crucial, is enhancing the access to housing finance, particularly deepening the participation of the capital market in housing finance. And we already have a capitalization. Our, our stock exchange is, a, you know, compared to the rest of Africa, has, you know, a huge, uh, has, has huge capital. It's about 57 billion US dollars. That's the second largest stock exchange in sub-Saharan Africa. But very little of that capital goes into housing or into mortgages. So very, something that's very important is to ensure that we're able to provide mortgages for housing. In other parts of the world, people do not pay cash for a house. And I'm happy to note that that is what is going on in, your house, in the housing estate here, that there is a financing arrangement so that by paying what is ordinarily your rent, by just paying your rent every month, eventually you're able to own a house. So it's not just rent. Your rent is actually payment towards the ownership of the house. And I think that's a very uh, important thing, which is what we hope to achieve through our, our own uh, housing finance initiatives. The third objective of the proposed national housing strategy is to deepen the participation of our capital markets, as I've said, in housing. And this is very critical because we recognize that there are competing priorities for government funding. Government funds alone can never provide enough houses for everybody. It's impossible. If you look at, in fact, uh, the, His Excellency the Governor uh, and I were talking just as we were coming, you know, Dangote uh, Cement has a profit of over 300 billion. I think their last profit, 300 billion. The whole uh, budget of Nasarawa State is probably about 150 billion or so. It's not even up to 150 billion. 
and Dangote cement in one year, you know, profit is 300 billion. So when people say government must do, government must do, government must do, you don't know how limited government really is. Because Nazareth, just compare Nazareth to, to so Dangote can pay the budget of Nazareth State twice. In one year, I can pay twice. In other words, you can see I'll pay Nazareth State budget two years. So the truth of the matter is that there is inadequate funding. So we must bring in the private sector, which is why we negotiated with uh, Dangote, Boa, and Lafarge that make your own contribution to this effort. Give us a discount on cement. And they've been able to do so. And we can do a lot more, especially with the capital markets. We can move funds from the capital market to housing finance so that more people can get mortgages. So I'm delighted to, with what I'm seeing here and with the partnership and joint working relationship that is creating a new and vibrant neighborhood in this part of Nassau State. And I'm hopeful that with the example that you have set, this can serve as a model for many others to follow, especially with the potential for creating homes that are affordable uh, for Nigerians on very modest incomes or for young people who are just starting out in life. And I think this occasion provides an opportunity to highlight an important point. The first is that we are celebrating the 1,000th home built today by the Millard Fuller Foundation, a Nigerian affiliate of the Fuller Center for Housing. This is a faith-driven organization providing affordable housing for all people in need, all people, well, whatever their faith may be, whatever their religion may be, even those who do not believe in God will be provided housing under the scheme. That is the vision of the founders of, uh, of the uh, Millard Fuller Foundation. So the foundation was established, I'm told, by a remarkable couple, Millard and Jenny Fuller, who chose to commit their wealth, the very wealthy people, to improving the housing conditions of people who are on low income as a practical expression of their faith. And I think this points to a real opportunity for us here in Nigeria, an, op an opportunity for civil society, for faith-based organizations, for churches, for mosques, for places of worship, and for religion generally, that we can do things that will impact the lives of people. That all of us, whether you are Muslim or Christian, your wealth, your personal wealth, can contribute towards the improving the lives and livelihoods of other people. The injunction to love and care for each other is central to practically all faiths. There is no faith that does not preach that you must love your neighbor and help your neighbor. I'm sure one of the important reasons that we're here uh, uh, today is because uh, these, th this couple, uh, Millard and Jenny Fuller, lived out their faith. They made a practical demonstration of their faith. And I think we also, all of us, whether you're Muslim, Christian, or any other faith, we must demonstrate in practical terms our faith. So there's potential uh, for joining uh, the National Social Housing Program, particularly providing uh, homes alongside government within an organized framework, which is what the Miller uh, Fuller Foundation has done with our Family Homes Fund. They joined in order to be able to uh, partner with government to provide uh, some of these schemes in, alongside what they themselves are doing. I think there's also a lesson in resilience to learn from the project. I know how persistent uh, Mr. Samodia and his team have been to get to this point. You know, It's been many years, and he's discussed this with me so many times, so many challenges. But well, here we are today celebrating the 1,000 home. Only four years ago, this would have been considered uh, impossible. But then we are now seeing with partnerships, with hard work, with resilience, that is indeed possible to build a thousand homes by private efforts, by mainly private efforts, and to make sure that those homes are homes that people can live in and give testimonies about, as we've heard uh, the two, test, uh, the two who, have, who have given testimonies today. In the quest for rebuilding our own nation, I think we should take something from the resilient spirit that has made the Grand Louvre possible. And I'm convinced that our country certainly not just has a potential to be great, but will be great without any doubt at all.
And the reason, and the reason why, and the reason why our country was is not is not because of government. It's because of the, because of its people. We have a hardworking, resilient, serious-minded people. And what we need to do is to work together, just as we've seen here, to build. Countries of the world that have succeeded have built on the, on the initiative, on the enterprise of their own citizens. And I think it is possible for us to build on the initiatives and the enterprise of our own citizens. So I, I wish you all, uh, especially first uh, the Miller uh, Fuller Foundation, uh, more success in the years to come. I also want to thank uh, your partners, the Family Homes Fund, the real UK and the artisans and the people of Massacre who have been such gracious hosts and who have benefited from the great work you have done. Again, I also want to commend uh, His Excellency the Governor for innovation and foresight. I think it helps when you have uh, an experienced businessman as your governor. You know, he has, he has immediately he has immediately seen the business sense in building a road here. After all, the people here will pay taxes. <laughs> and income taxes too. Thank you very much and God bless you.